Welcome to Statistics Basics. Today, we are going to take a closer look at two common mistakes that can happen when we use statistics to make decisions, type 1 and type 2 errors. These errors can have some pretty big consequences in the real world, so it's important to understand what they are and how to avoid them as much as possible. We'll see how these errors show up in everyday situations like medical tests or quality control and we'll also talk about how to find the right balance between these two types of errors. Imagine you're a scientist testing a new cancer drug. Your goal is to gather evidence to decide whether the new drug is more effective compared to the traditional one. Your hope is that the new drug leads to a significantly better outcome compared to the old treatment. This is the probability distribution of a test statistic assuming the null hypothesis is true, which states that the drug has no effect. In other words, it shows us what kind of results we would expect to see by random chance alone if the drug truly had no effect. This is where the concepts of type 1 and type 2 errors become crucial in interpreting your results. A type 1 error occurs when you reject the null hypothesis when it's actually true. This means you concluded that the drug works while in reality it doesn't. This can lead to the approval of ineffective treatments, wasting resources, and potentially harming patients. The probability of a type 1 error is called alpha which also known as the significance level. It is the threshold you set before performing the hypothesis to make a decision about the null hypothesis. A type 2 error occurs when you fail to reject the null hypothesis when it's actually false. This means you concluded that the drug doesn't work when it actually does. This could prevent a potentially life-saving treatment from reaching patients. Now, imagine these errors as two opposing forces on a scale. The challenge lies in finding the optimal balance between these two errors. We can adjust how strict our clinical trials are, but there's always a trade-off. If we make it harder to approve a drug, reducing the risk of type 1 errors, we also increase the chances of missing out on truly effective medications that is increasing the type 2 error. Conversely, if we relax our standards to avoid missing potential breakthroughs, we risk approving drugs that don't actually work. By carefully balancing risks and using strong scientific methods, researchers aim to ensure that only safe and effective drugs reach those who need them. Let's quickly summarize the four possible outcomes in hypothesis testing. When the null hypothesis is true and the decision is to reject the null hypothesis, a type 1 error occurs. This means we've incorrectly concluded that there's an effect or difference while in reality there isn't. When the null hypothesis is true and the decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis, a correct decision is made. This means we've correctly concluded that there's no effect or difference. When the null hypothesis is false and the decision is to reject the null hypothesis, a correct decision is made. This means we've correctly concluded that there's an effect or difference. When the null hypothesis is false and the decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis, a type 2 error occurs. This means we've incorrectly concluded that there's no effect or difference while in reality there is one. If you'd like to test your knowledge on this topic, be sure to check the quiz link in the description below or visit our community page. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe for more statistics content.